this team is not filled with the best players in the world, but this is one of the best teams in the world. This is a team with no star. Turkish Airlines have challenged me to visit 10 Euro countries in just 10 days, finding out what international football means to Europe. <laughs> Meet Europe's best has touched down in its eighth nation, Iceland. It's freezing cold, but I couldn't care less because this is the one, if I'm honest, I've been looking forward to the most. We are talking about the smallest nation to ever qualify for the tournament. They've only got 330,000 people, and with 25,000 heading to the tournament, they're sending 8% of their population. I've only got 12 hours here once again, so what I gotta do is find out is if they are as excited for this as I am. The country's absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Oh, it's very exciting. Everybody's excited about it. You know? Has there ever been anything that's exciting happened to Iceland? Second place in Eurovision? Once. They say it's the hardest language in the world. I got it down pat, man. Fuck, I'm Islam, isn't it? Tell me a bit about your role with the supporters club. It's called Tolvan, which means the 12th man. It was founded back in 2007. The Icelandic stadium was known to be among the most boring in Europe. You could hear a pin drop. Scotland, Sweden. Who's that? Fairy Islands. Fairy Islands. Oh, you, you, I hope you beat them. <laughs> we, have, we have lost to them in the past. The Fairy Islands. Yeah, I mean, we were losing to everyone. One thing that we could not imagine maybe back in 2007 was that we would actually be able to get 10,000 people singing with us because in the beginning we were maybe 50 and people were looking at us. Who are these people? Because Icelandic people are not very expressive most of the time. What's your favourite chant that you love to hear when it comes around the stadium? Um, I love the Gunnarsson chant. Okay, how does Gunnarsson chant go? It goes... Aron Einar Gunnarsson Stýrir miðju eins og don Hann er okkar kaftet Hann er okkar kaftet If you travel as an Icelandic person around the world, mm -hmm. they might stop you for cigarettes or bjork yeah, yeah, yeah. or fishing. Yeah. But they well, never for you. football, not until now. Do you think that, ch that changes now? <laughs> that definitely. How does that uh, make you and the rest of the country? Proud, feel? proud. Can anything else do that? Winning the uh, Euro Cup, yeah. <laughs> Has it changed maybe the way you guys see yourselves? No, we've always had a small country but a big ego. What makes Iceland special is the crazy self-belief that Icelandic people have. I think it's like a little country syndrome. I, I believe that. We're not going to the Euros with the best team, but we're going to the Euros with the strongest mentality. Uh, you have to be a little bit crazy to live here in Iceland. There's over 30 active volcanoes, earthquakes, a lot of national disasters and stuff like that. You have to be a little bit crazy to live here. Mm -hmm. So we can go out there and we just can get a little bit crazy and just do it. Just do what? Quarters? Yeah, get out of the group and go further. How far? Why not win it? Really? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Everything positive that happens to Iceland or Icelandic people, the Icelanders revel in it and uh, <laughs> go for the right. It's a small nation, but we have a big sense of pride, I would say. And I think- I'm hearing that a lot, you're, you're very proud of where you guys come from. Yeah, yeah, I think that's in us all here. Iceland is so small, everybody knows everybody. Do you know someone in the squad, through I, someone? Obviously no people that know them. So, it's, so, you know, you always have that, it's always very short, because if, if you don't know them personally, you know somebody that knows them. I produced uh, a lot of commercials for the, for the goalkeeper, Hannes. But the first team goalkeeper? Yeah. He's also a director. He, yeah, I mean, he's, he's on a break now. <laughs> They're our guys here. It's, it's my cousin, it's my cousin third grade or something, you know. Or I know his best friend or something like this. So everybody is personally connected to these 22 players. That same guy is about to go in goals against Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, exactly, he's, uh, it's ridiculous. This, is, this isn't the most beautiful story of the Euros. <laughs> I don't know what is. Because of that community and that connection you feel with the players, when you watch them in these massive matches, does it feel like you actually got a brother on the field? Well, you could say so. I think a lot of people feel like that, that way, you know. They no other fans will get that though. No, maybe, pro probably not. I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm from Iceland. I only know this <laughs> feeling, so. <laughs> I feel like a local village club has qualified for the Euros because it's just, the community is so inclusive and so connected. Yeah, it, it probably is like that. So yeah. you, you hitting up uh, some of the players for the tickets? No. 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 
relationship between the fan and the team. You no, know, it's not like us and them. It is a mutual effort in a way. And uh, I think, you know, we feed each other with that same passion. And I think it just, it goes both ways. And the players show us fans a lot of respect. The head coach comes before every game. Lars Lagerbach? No, not Lars, but Hamid. He comes to the pub about two hours before the game, has a little speech for the supporters, That's talks amazing. about the team, talks about what they're going to do and the tactics and gives us the fighting spirit. So that's the kind of mutual relationship we have. And I think that no creates, one has that. I don't think so. You know, I think it's kind of unique. And I think that creates, you know, it's a big part of the whole saga here that's being created. In my time with Kopanani, I've met many football clubs that have a really incredible community spirit, but I've never met a national team with one until I came here. It seems ridiculous, but you get the feeling this Icelandic spirit, nothing is going to stop them. And that is what makes them one of Europe's best. From here in Iceland, we're off to the nation that considers themselves the home of football, England. And we're doing it a bit differently with a bit of help from my friends at comments below, Colin and Vuj. And you know when they're involved, it's always entertaining. So make sure you subscribe to Copper 90 and follow us around Europe as we meet Europe's best.